You're watching News View. And now, from Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, it's News View. Hello and welcome to News View. Brad Chacos of PC World has recently written this article about Windows 8.1. He says, Desktop diehards will find a present waiting for them in Windows 8.1. The impeding upgrade colloquially dubbed Windows Blue, quote unquote, a wonderful, horrible, oh so teasing present. The start button is back, but the start menu isn't. Instead, clicking the old familiar button will dump you into the modern UI start screen. While the new feature is notable for adding a helpful visual cue to an operating system rife with hidden menus, it isn't exactly what people begging for the return of the start button were looking for. One much clamored for, mouse and keyboard friendly feature will be making a debut in Windows 8.1, however. The update adds the option to boot directly to the desktop, bypassing the modern UI start screen completely. Actually, you can boot into several alternate locations, including the All Apps view. He goes on to say another new option adds the ability to carry your desktop background over to the modern interface, fostering a more unified feel across the operating system. If that doesn't float your boat, new start screen covers and backgrounds will also be available, including some animated elements. You could also choose to use a slideshow of your pictures for your lock screen, in effect having your PC double as a really expensive digital picture frame when you're not actively using it. All that said, most of the Windows 8.1 enhancements are made to bolster the modern environment, not the desktop. The most welcome improvement is the addition of fully customizable snap views. No longer will you be locked into the two app quarter screen snap limitations of Windows 8 vanilla, Windows 8.1, adds the ability to resize snap apps to any ratio you'd like and includes an option to snap three apps side by side by side. You'll also be able to have multiple instances of an app open and snapped. Microsoft blog post lists two Internet Explorer windows as an example. Hate the way that every newly installed app gets plopped onto your start screen? You won't once Windows 8.1 hits because that annoying feature, quote unquote, is going the way of the dodo. Instead, any apps installed from the Windows Store will appear under a new, new, quote unquote, filter in the All Apps view from which you can choose to pin apps to the start screen if you so desire. Yay, self-determination, he says. Windows RT users will be happy to hear that the, modem, the modern SkyDrive app is gaining the ability to save files both to the cloud and as well as locally. Currently, you can only use the SkyDrive app to view files already stored in the cloud. The modern style PC setting options is also getting a big boost. One of the biggest complaints about Windows 8 is the way it constantly swaps you back and forth between the desktop and modern interfaces, 
a problem exasperated by the fact that you have to drive into the desktop control panel to tinker with under the hood stuff. No more. Quote, the updated PC settings in Windows 8.1 gives you access to all your settings on your device without having to go to the control panel on the desktop, unquote, says Microsoft's introductory blog post. Internet Explorer 11 will make its debut in Windows 8.1 as well. While most of the tweaks sounds, sound fairly basic, faster page loads, better touch performance, it's also adding the tab syncing feature seen in leaked builds of Blue, allowing you to open tabs across multiple Windows 8.1 PCs and tablets. And you can read more about this at PCWorld.com uh, under Windows 8. Microsoft outs the new features in Windows 8.1. Here's what you'll need to know. And according to um, Tron.com at www.chron.com, a wave of bombings has killed 30 in fresh Iraq attacks, according to the Associated Press. And in other news, Grumpy Cat has landed a movie deal, according to therap.com. This should make even the orneriest, orneriest kitty purr, they say at therap.com. Internet sensation Grumpy Cat has landed a movie deal. The, sur the Survey Felines management team, yes, she has one, told therap.com that Grumpy Cat's big screen close-up comes courtesy of a deal with Broken Road Productions, which has previously worked on such films as Zoo Keeper and Jack and Jill. A representative for Broken Road did not immediately respond to a request for comment. To recap for those readers who do not spend their days trolling or trolling, trolling the interweb for cat videos and pictures, Grumpy Cat's brush with celebrity came after a picture of her scowling mug was picked, posted on Reddit in September of 2012. A Facebook fan page for Grumpy Cat has attracted more than 870,000 likes, and the cat has been featured in the documentary Lil Bub and Friends, which screened at this year's Tribeca Film Festival. But Grumpy Cat, whose real name is Tartar Sauce, wasn't content to rest on those laurels. She went on to capture the coveted Meme of the Year prize at the 17th Annual Webby Awards, beating out the likes of Goats Yelling Like Humans and Gangnam Style. Grumpy Cat's puckered up mug is the result of feline dwarfism. No words yet on what the storyline of the big screen adventure will entail, though Deadline, which broke the news, will, it will be a Garfield-like film. And you might have heard about this. Uh, TMZ reported last week that a uh, former actress, maybe current actress, I don't know, Amanda Bynes was um, caught with a bong she threw out the window and charged on a felony. Then she uh, soon after claimed that that was a fake report and the police officers were really abusing her. Now she is suing TMZ, or she wants to um, sue TMZ over the pictures. She says they faked a photo of a smash bong allegedly outside her apartment. 
She says, quote, I'm suing TMZ for staging fake buying photos, quote, unquote. She posted, it's not even a bong. The photo shows it's clearly a clear and blue stained glass cry bottle from some random street. Um, okay. Uh, and in Washington, D.C., snakes are in the trees at one park. And that according to WTOP.com, uh, WTOP News Radio 103.5 FM, they say Washington. They're not on a plane, but snakes in a tree could be still be scary, especially when they're spotted in D.C. DCist uh, says an email in Adams Morgan Yahoo, Yahoo group by a D.C. police sergeant discussed snakes falling out of the trees at Walter per Percy Park in Northwest. The posting was reported by the website Pope and reads, quote, on Thursday, May 23rd, 2013, around 11.40 a.m., a call came in about a couple of snakes that fell out of the trees. When the snakes fell, they scared the children and everyone fled. This was in the playground area. I responded but found no snakes. I caught one small enough to fit inside an empty water bottle. I had it, but it was probably a black rat snake. They're indigenous to trees, and the warm weather is drawing them out, unquote. Albemarle Crusader, Crus a painter who sometimes does work at a building near the park, tells WTIOP the snake sighting occurred around the time when he was parking his car last Thursday. He says he heard a commotion at the park and helped remove about six children from the area. He says women at the park said the snake came out of a tree and took his and he took the cell phone video of a snake at a playground at the park. And according to um, Breitbart.com, the Associated Press has a CEO who says thousands and thousands of phone records were seized. They say the government obtained thousands and thousands of these phone records of Associated Press staffers, according to CEO Gary Pruitt. Pruitt held a town hall meeting with AP staff and revealed that the phone records obtained by the DOJ included incoming and outgoing calls for news organization, for the news organization. During the town hall, Pruitt reiterate, reiterated that the AP did not report on the CIA-thwarted terrorist plot in May 2012 out of national security concerns until sources indicated the Obama administration was going to announce it publicly. The Associated Press has joined the New York Times in refusing to attend an off-the-record briefing by Attorney General Eric Holder over the DOJ's policy regarding reporters and leaked investigations, or leak investigations. And Crime Stoppers of Sangamon County and WCIA say Springfield, Dateline, police are investigating several car burglaries which involve criminal damage. The incidents happened on the west side of town throughout May. The hardest hit areas are between Washington to West Monroe and veterans to Chatham Road. One suspect is described as a tall, thin black man in his 30s with a mustache and short hair. 
He was seen prying on a car window. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. You can remain anonymous and may earn a cash reward. Sangamon and Menard County Crime Stoppers can be contacted at area code 217-788-8427. I mean 788-8427 or go to cashfortips.us or text TIP672 plus the info to CRIMES or C-R-I-M-E-S or 274637. And a duck rescue, according to Channel 3, had occurred in Champaign this week. One woman started a rescue effort after five ducklings fell into a storm drain. Traffic was rerouted near Neal and Market View streets while Lena Cosman and her daughter Sarah tried to rescue the wayward fowl. Bystanders, police, and others eventually grew to a crowd of more than 10, anxious to save the birds. Cosman says the response was surprising. It took more than one hour to rescue the ducklings. Crews used a hose to direct one of them toward another manhole. All five have been reunited with the mother. And WCIA-TV Channel 3 in Champaign, Illinois, also reports that car patients could see an extra bill. If you're a car patient, you could be getting an extra bill in the mail. The main campus is starting a new billing process. Patients will get a charge from both the physician and faculty for an office visit. The hospital is making a change to balance out budget cuts. Leaders say depending on insurance, most patients won't see a change, but if they do, they have options. Quote, Carl offers the same benefits to them that we offer today. We have payment plans to pay off your portion of the bill. We offer charity care. There's an application that goes with that, but many patients benefit from the charity care. Unquote. Carl Vice President Don Walden said that. And the bill change goes into effect Saturday, June 1st, 2013. And they also say at WCIA, a man exposed himself to an 11-year-old girl in Savoy. And the mom is in disbelief after a man exposed himself to her 11-year-old daughter it happened in the 1700 block of Lynnhurst Drive. That's where the fifth grader was riding her bike. The man stopped his car to ask directions. What happened next sent the girl running. He hasn't been arrested. The family opted not to show their face or name. Quote, I just saw my daughter inside the house running and crying and shaking. Like, Mom, Mom, there's somebody out there, unquote. Without thinking twice, she ran outside to look. Quote, I said, calm down, honey, what happened, tell me. Well, her daughter told her while she was riding her bike, a man stopped his car and opened his door. That's when the victim realized the man wasn't wearing pants and was touching himself. Quote, it was so sad for a little girl 11 years old to see that, unquote. The girl threw down her bike and ran home. Quote, middle of the day, busy street, very close to my house, unquote, said the mother. A similar situation happened in April, just a few, few blocks away in the 100 block of Paddock Drive. Now this mother worries what was supposed to be a fun summer day, will put a scar on her daughter's life. Quote, when I went to sleep, I was thinking, what is my daughter thinking now? How will this affect her? Unquote. Police don't have much of a description for the man, just that he was driving a black four-door car with gray interior. 
Riverfront Museum, according to week.com in Peoria, channel 25 on TV there. Peoria Riverfront Museum officials are finally painting a clearer, although not that great, financial picture of their first year. An operating and lease agreement, museum officials are supposed to give Peoria County officials audited financial statements in a timely fashion. However, that did not happen until Tuesday. Peoria Riverfront Museum Board Chair Dave Ransberg said, quote, we just hoped they would be a little better, but attendance was down, so the revenues are down but we're not sinking or anything, we're going forward. The records show the museum lost nearly $290,000 in the first 10 months of operation. That's 30,000 more than they had projected to lose. Attendance was also down almost 1,800 people from what consultants projected. And this is Michael Badger. You're watching News View. Stay tuned for weather and a Crime Stoppers announcement after this break. A message from Champaign County Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers is holding a shredded event. And they say, protect your identity. Keep your old documents out of the wrong hands. Champaign County Crime Stoppers says the best way to protect yourself against uh, identity theft is to make sure your personal information doesn't fall into the wrong hands. And just a few minutes on your part could make a huge difference. Join Crime Stoppers of Champaign County Saturday, June 1st from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. for the Shredded event. Bring your old personal documents to the State Farm Center, formerly known as the Assembly Hall, where you can get rid of them permanently. We're working with Monster Shred, a local company dedicated to helping you and the environment at the same time. We'll accept the following documents, medical records, financial statements, credit applications, bank statements, documents with social security numbers or driver's license numbers, bank checks, tax records, and legal documents over eight years old. There has been remarkable support for this annual event. It has helped stop identity theft in central Illinois while saving more than 150 trees and more than 25 cubic yards of landfill space. But because of this success, we're limiting the number of boxes we can accept. The limit is two boxes, no bigger than a banker box. For more details, log on to the Champaign County Crime Stoppers website at www.373tips.com. That's 373tips.com. The U.S. Department of Justice says identity theft hurts millions of people every year. John Hacker, president of Crime Stoppers of Champaign County, believes a proactive approach can save you time, money, and worrying in the long run 
and Crime Stoppers is happy to lead the way. Come out and join them Saturday, June 1st at the State Farm Center from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Look for them in the parking lot under the marquee at Kirby and First Streets on the U of I campus. Crime Stoppers is asking for a small donation of $5 to help pay future rewards. Crime Stoppers offers rewards of up to $1,000 for tips that lead to arrests in cases across Champaign County. For more information, contact Troy Daniels, Champaign County Deputy, no, Champaign Deputy Police Chief at 403-6909. That's 403-6909. And uh, you can also contact John Hecker, President of Crime Stoppers of Champaign County, at 356-8391. That's the Crime Stoppers Shredded event Saturday, June 1st from 9 uh, to 11 in the morning. Now here's your news view weather for the central Illinois area. Friday night tonight, when you're watching this in the Champaign-Urbana area, 68 degrees with thunderstorms. Saturday, a high of 79 with thunderstorms. Saturday night, 59 degrees with thunderstorms. Sunday. 71 degrees out with thunderstorms and Sunday night a low of 55 under mostly cloudy skies. This has been Michael Badger with your Central Illinois weather forecast for May 31st, June 1st, and June 2nd, 2013.